Good morning and welcome to Ask the Expert. I'm Joe Taylor. This morning, another in the ongoing series of programs presented by the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning. The program, through the Northwest Institute of Research, oversees a grant from the Office of Child Development and Early Learning at the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services and the Department of Education. The goal of the program is to improve the outcomes for young children as they prepare for school. John Poza from the Pennsylvania Key is the host of the program and is with us throughout the series and is with us this morning. John, and who's with us on the phone? Uh, Good morning, Joe. This morning we have Liz Naus, who is the Director of Communications for the Pennsylvania Key. And Liz has a very, very interesting background. She has many years of experience working and managing large uh, childhood, early childhood programs through the Department of Defense, as she has 25 years um, uh, having worked in the military. So really interesting. We wanted to talk to her this morning. So welcome to the program, Liz. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, great to have you. Well, first off, you're now in a new position. And uh as director of communications, so for for our listeners who who may not be familiar with um, the what the job entails in the Pennsylvania Key, can you can you enlighten them a little bit about what your responsibilities are? Yes, um, I am the director of communication for the Pennsylvania Key and the Office of Child Development and Early Learning. So I carry the message of our early learning initiatives throughout to the community to our stakeholders. Um, whether they are families or whether they are um, child care providers, teachers, um, things like that, in all types of of ways, whether it's digitally or um, in print. Um, Get information inward, that's me. That's great. And so it's such an important piece of the puzzle in terms of quality early learning because it's one thing to prepare communications for those working in the field. It's another thing to making sure the right information is getting out to families and parents on things that they can be doing or things that will improve the the development of their own child. Absolutely. Uh, I think it really is, and Pennsylvania is very um, diverse, making sure that we communicate that in ways that people can understand it and want to hear it or are listening. Absolutely. And and getting that information and that feedback back from the field and from families of what is ne- what is needed. Um, so it's a kind of, it, as you know, communication is certainly two-way. Absolutely. And I, I, and I couldn't help but uh, really be interested in your background and what you bring to this new position. Um, you're obviously uh, retired from the military, but you work several years in a variety of different capacities, but mainly overseeing child care programs. Tell us a little bit about what that was like and what drew you to that type of work? Civil servant from the military. So my husband was active duty, and um, he was. we first got married. He was stationed in Fairbanks, Alaska, and I was going to college at the time um, for early childhood education. And I transferred to the University of Alaska, and I graduated from there as well as WVU. But I went to the University of Alaska, and I got started in early learning through work in Fairbanks at I, I, at that time I worked for uh, Fort Wainwright and they have a child development program um, that serves families of military families and that's how I started as a preschool teacher. That's fantastic and then you know you, you had mentioned uh, as I reviewed your background and this is so important and I think it's something that our listeners and the general public really would be interested in knowing that military child care became an integral part of the Department of Defense's strategy to care for what they call the whole soldier, uh, children included. And, you know, the military has had a reputation for providing top-notch uh, quality early learning for uh, those who are serving. Um, tell us a little bit about that concept of uh, caring for the whole soldier. Uh, yes, and I've, I, having worked there for so many years, I had the, the the privilege and the opportunity to be able to see it evolve over time. Um, My brother actually was in military child care programs when my parents were stationed in Germany. And um, what my mother explained to me about how the early childhood programs were there, they really were somewhat non-existent, um, to how it's it's really evolved today into a, a, it is really a model for the profession in early learning. And and that's because the, the military has taken the steps 
to provide the funding, for one thing. That's a very large piece of it that that does come from professional support. Absolutely. To, to provide about 50% of their funding and for our child care programs, and then military members make up the other 50% in their fees. So what that really means is that the programs are funded um, in two ways. And that, that results in funding from the military being able to provide early learning experiences for children from, from birth to 18. So we have programs that, that run the gamut. Because as you know, if you are deployed or if you're away from your family, you, ne- you can't worry about that. You need to know that your family is taken care of. And, you, and that involves understanding what you have a deployed parent and making sure that our staff are trained in that. And so there's an enormous amount of work that has gone involved behind the scenes gone on with the military that has really put forth, I would say, their money in their mouth. When they signed up, they would take care of you, and they meant that. And that, they meant their family, too. And years ago, it used to be kind of an adage that said, we didn't sign up your, your family or your wife or your spouse. Um, your children didn't sign up for the military. But that's really not the case anymore. And especially in Pennsylvania, I really want to make sure that, that, that your listeners um, know that, that the Pennsylvania National Guard is the fourth largest National Guard in the United States. And um, as far as deployments are concerned, they are, they are right there side by side with um, active duty as well. So we call those children, and when I worked there, as suddenly military parents would leave for you know, maybe one week in a month, go, go for the weekend, go, go away for a time. That's not the case anymore. That um, You very rarely will find someone who's been in the Pennsylvania National Guard, whether it's Army or Air Force, National Guard that has not, or Air National Guard that has not been deployed or is not getting ready to deploy. Um, even now. So um, so know that, that it, you don't have to be at a military installation to know that many members of your community have experienced that. And the military child care programs have reached out even in rural areas to those to the military members in their communities, whether you're Army, um, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, your Reserve, or Air Force, or Army, um, sorry, or National Guard. How will you apply your experience in helping the children and families of members of the military to your work in advancing the cause of early childhood education here in Pennsylvania. So how is what you've been doing applicable to what you're going to now be doing? I think tip, your typical communications director um, does not have an early childhood background. Um, usually it's very much a communication background. Um, I have both, and I had that experience and exposure to different cultures and different um, ways of doing child development programs, getting your other um, most people do not know that, but most military installations have a very large cultural um, diversity. And so I'm very, very comfortable speaking into different types of um, families, of whether it's um, different languages, um, different family compositions, things like that. That is a very commonplace thing in the military, so I'm very, very comfortable there. And being able to explain that and having been on the other end of that as well as a, as a consumer, when my husband was gone as well or as a consumer um, while we were a working family, um, or as a as, you know managing programs as, um, and working in those programs, so I think I have a very very good understanding, a very good footing of and and, and of child development um, as a consumer as well as as a um, employee. And then I have a communications background because as you move throughout the military program and you get promoted, you become more the spokesperson and you become more the person who is looking garnering all of the resources and um, making sure that those resources are applicable to your deeds. And I think that's a little bit of what I do now. So I did an enormous amount of public speaking when I worked um, for the Army, especially, as I progressed through my career. So I I did an enormous amount of of public speaking. Well, you must have also had an impact on your kids because uh, I I understand your your one child, uh, Bill, who's also uh, first lieutenant in the Army National Guard. He's now an early childhood major, right, at Chippensburg. He is. He is. Um, and, and, you know, it, most early childhood people will tell you their children sort of grew up with them in their program, and, and my children did as well. So you know, my oldest son um, had the most impact with the military with us because he, he was old enough, he's old enough to remember moving around quite a bit and, and being in all of the military programs. So he is a, he's a, a student, a master student at Shippensburg right now, yeah, but he is in the Pennsylvania National Guard. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then just prior to, to coming to the PA Key, you were actually at the U.S. Army War College um, in uh, uh, Fort Indian Town Gap. Is that correct? Is that where? Or no, at Carlisle. At Carlisle. Uh, yeah. And uh, 
you you actually uh, were in charge of a program where where you actually did leadership and strategic communications for the barracks programs. Uh, what was that like? So um, the Army has a program called Morale, Welfare, and Recreation, and and what that encompasses is um, the child development programs are within that construct, and so is um, Army Community Services. So is um, we have a little bit of HR, human resources um, oversight, and so it also encompasses food and beverage. All those types of things, the programs that I always say, everything except the college piece of the Army War College um, and the and the, the uh, security piece right. is morale, welfare, and recreation, and that is at every installation. and And I did have Fort Eighty Town Gap and Letter Kent Army Depot as well, right? Um, is part of that, and so part of my role was was developing those leaders within those programs, to be able to manage them, and to be able to continue the field in the way that that um, every family, whether you are stationed at Carlisle or whether you're stationed at Fort Bliss. You should have that same expectation when you come to our post that you're going to see the same, see the same programs and the same level of quality of service. Right. Well, let's go back to the Pennsylvania Key. I know you've been in the position for not a real long period of time, but maybe you want to give us an idea of what some of your uh, uh, goals that you're working on right now, some of the projects that, that are kind of at the forefront. I can, and, and I, I think some observations of that would be with, um, worthwhile to your listeners. Well, coming from a completely different world, so to speak, in early childhood, and then seeing it from the state perspective, my home state, my husband, I grew up here, so it is really very, very satisfying to be able to come back um, to in, within Pennsylvania State and see what strides we made. Because I started out working in I, I Carlisle as, a, as an aide in a classroom when I first started, when the requirements really weren't that that. There really wasn't a whole lot of requirements. There wasn't a whole lot of background checks. Things like that didn't happen. Right. Like training really wasn't required. Um, to be able to come back and work uh, on programs like the STARS revisioning process and to be able to see how that is really shaping how our profession is really tough profession from now and even in the future. And it's hard. That, that is a very difficult change part and constantly in that kind of mode. Um, it's hard, but it's pretty darn exciting and very gratifying for me to be able to be able to help communicate that and to be able to be a part of that. So I think that um, there's an enormous amount out of the Office of Child Development and Early Learning with the state. Very much so where I see that the federal government and the Army and the Air Force all that put, in the put their money where their mouth was, families and soldiers. It's really, really nice to see that with a state entity. Um, have, I, Alaska did a very similar type program reminiscent to me of, of my time in Alaska, um, they did as well. They put a lot of their... So I, I see a lot of that. So much of my work is surrounded around the, the Keystone Stars revisioning and that process. And also the, the early... First, uh, a big piece of mine, getting that, that message out to our communities and just really getting a kind of a... I want people to see really what's happening so that those stories have been told other than places like your show that have really been told throughout the state itself um, to be able to show there's a lot of really good programs being put out um, and a lot of money being funneled in learning. Go, going off uh, from, from what you're saying, uh, as the new communications director of PA Key, uh, speaking of communications and the advancement of early childhood learning, how much emphasis is placed on communicating the need for effective pre-K programs to uh, the people and entities that may not be fully on board. Uh, there are still parents out there. There are school systems out there. There are businesses, government entities, especially at the, at the local level that don't grasp the importance uh, of early childhood learning. Uh, how will you be reaching out to the as yet people who are not on board and don't feel that this is an absolute necessity? Um, part of at the local level in South Middleton County, school board president. And my platform was full day care. And, you know, and, and it ended up happening. But I put, it is not everybody was on board and not everybody thought this was a brilliant idea, except just a few. And then once you start explaining it, but it really does have to start at the local level. And you have to really get ahead of that. So part of my strategy really is going out to those communities explaining those things, because I believe that once you tell the decision makers, I've watched it, I've been able to watch Suzanne Morris explain those things when she's met with legislation, 
and or legislators, I've been able to see her do that, that, oh, you can just see the light come on. Even people who didn't start out thinking that, but once you start explaining the, the, explaining it, they can make it real. It can become personal to them. They can think of someone who is in the same boat or has that same difficulty getting to work or, or, or getting staff, being able to have staff or maybe, you know, managing a business with staff. So it, it, you know, early childhood isn't just, um, it creates so many different business opportunities for other businesses. And I think that speaks to people on a level, whether it's not just child development and, and everything that those of us who are early childhood people completely understand the value of early childhood education and the early learning piece of it. So being able to say that, but also being able to um, meet with people who aren't necessarily in the field is really, you know, that actually jazzes me. I'm pretty excited about doing that. Absolutely. And, and for our, our listeners who may not be familiar, of course, Liz referred to Keystone Stars and the, its revisioning. Keystone Stars, for those who have been following or listening to the show for the last three years, will know that it's the quality rating improvement system for child care, licensed child care providers in Pennsylvania. And uh, when we when she referred to revisioning, um, we're now, we were just got, actually got through the process of having a study done to um, relook at how the program is set up and make uh, make some changes, tweak it a little bit for improvement. So that's that's what uh, the Keystone Stars uh, is all about in the revisioning process. And I think that's what, what I, in part of my communication strategy is really getting that piece, what you just said, out, that I think is um, something that has probably not been discussed a lot, that the process of, we have a and we, we go out and we meet with stakeholders. We get feedback from stakeholders, and not just once, not just many. I'm at a meeting today. That's where I'm at today on uh, the Keystone Stars um, stakeholder group, and get that information. And then you develop the strategy, revisioning process based on all that. And I and then and it's going to you don't rest on your laurels because if you're going to bring a profession to a certain level and you want to raise the professional, you're going to to do that same type of strategy. That's exactly um, as we move what, forward, which is really, really an exciting time. Right. That's exactly what I was just going to say is, is the whole process of continuous quality improvement, CQI, is really a principle that applies to any type of organization or any type of business, is that you have to, you have to continually uh, analyze how you're doing, um, what, what's working well, what isn't working well, and you have to go back and make tweaks. And so it's an ongoing process, and I think that's that's really what the intent of the uh, the stars revisioning was all about. Um, there's so many stakeholders, as you well know, and um, and as Joe mentioned, I still think there's 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 still a, a a number of people in the public that maybe don't quite understand the full depth, or even 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 in the most basic way of how important. Uh, quality early learning and making sure their child is is receiving uh, quality education before they actually start school. So I think that's that's part of our job, uh, not only you as director of communications for the PA Key, but also in doing radio programs like like we're doing here, is to get the word out, and uh, and hopefully there's, there'll be. A, uh, a better understanding. I think on a national level, though, in terms of funding, public funding, I think the message has been heard loud and clear. And I think we're on a, uh, a pretty good standing now, both on the state and federal government. Don't, don't you? I, I absolutely uh, believe that as well. And, and you can see it that there used to be a big discrepancy. Between, for example, the military child development programs have, have had a, an excellent reputation for a um, there's, I mean, for example, every single one of my staff had a child development associate credential or a bachelor's degree, right. and that's about 300 staff all had that. So that's a pretty impressive number, but it didn't happen overnight. You know, it took a long time. Blood, sweat, tears got a lot of. Yep. You know, not everybody's overjoyed about going back. To school. No, I and, know. You know that you know that part, but but it, but it's been an amazing. That was an amazing process. That made it simple too, but in the long run. I think we'll be we will all be better for it, and you will you'll you'll see that as we move forward. I think that's what Pennsylvania really is in a very good trajectory in relationship to the federal world. That the federal government, like you said, has also kind of got on there. Start places like that. We've already figured that out, and Pennsylvania isn't shutting the door on that. They, in fact, they want to be the leader. And in what I'm finding is in much of my research in trying to find similar types of communication strategies within the other states. Pennsylvania is kind of paving the way a lot in a lot of ways. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
and I, I always uh, talk about taking baby steps is, is, is a really important, you know, not that, not to see this as like such an overwhelming task, but that, um, you know, it's a, like, it's a, again, the CQI process one step at a time, um, change doesn't happen overnight. Change takes time and change will continue. Um, for the betterment. And that's, like I said, that, that can be applied to so many different areas. Um, hey, can you, can you give us some insight? I know it may be early in the process, uh, the budgeting process with the state. How's it looking from your perspective right now in terms of funding for uh, early childhood programming uh, in the next fiscal year? Um, my understanding is so far so good. Um, I don't have actual numbers. But I will say this, is, and regardless of party, I will say this, that what I've witnessed and what I've seen so far is legislated or listed. And if we can provide them with the data that they're looking for and the, actually the verbiage and the understanding of what they're working on, on money and the budget piece of it, um, they're at least listening. And that, you know, I can remember many times that early childhood certainly didn't get... So it's impressive to me that even the legislators who may not necessarily be on board or necessarily understanding, they're listening. So that says to me that their constituents are talking to them as well. So that whole, getting that conversation going and keeping it going and keeping it in the forefront will for our budget. Yeah, that's good. Hey, I wanted to ask you, is your, is your husband still in the military? Um, he's not. He, he is a teacher at Cumberland Perry Votech in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, I, I just really the the your back your background, both uh, being in the military and having having that experience, is just uh, so valuable. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, and and just to get back to getting back to the military experience, um, just kind of wanted to. So you may have already, um, you know, touched on this, but it, uh, it, uh, someone that's actually serving in the military, that's married and has children. That that child care, that uh, quality early learning for their their children, that's a benefit, correct? Or is that something that they still have to pay for? No, no, they have to pay for it. But they it's do. Subs- um, about at fifty percent of the actual cost. Okay. That does it's much cheaper than than you will see in, in maybe in the outside world. But what you will see is an enormous amount of quality. For example, talking about our our Keystone Stars program. Every military child development program is required to be accredited through the National Association. Right. And so that, that's a requirement, and Department of Defense certified. So um, all of our programs would star four levels and above if they had a, you know, another star. They would be all star four levels and above. So you're right. a lot of that quality, but you're getting subsidized 50% by um, its congressional um, mandate. Right. I see. I see. Well, I'll tell you, Liz... Yeah, this has been a, a, a great program. Um, enjoyed uh, having you on and, and learning a lot about the the influence that uh, child care in the military has and how it uh, really takes care of the whole soldier, so to speak. Um, and it's it's great for our listeners to know. And, and I wish you all the success in your new position as Director of Communications for the Pennsylvania Key and hope to have you on again. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been great getting to know you both. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Liz. And that's our program for today. We'll be back in two weeks at the same time. In the meantime, you can go online to learn more at papromiseforchildren.com. For John Posa and the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning, I'm Joe Taylor. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.